Alright guys, uh, this is what should be a spectacularly gorgeous midsummer day here in the collapse of everything and would be if it was not for this wildfire smoke choking out the skies here at Bugs in a Jar Farm on, uh, as I say, what should be a lovely Monday afternoon, July. 29th 2024 so guys I want to talk to you I, I have never done a rant about uh, this website called collapse survival site yes collapse survival uh, site it's uh, I just <clears throat> I'm on this uh, website uh, I stay on it just, just for my daily chuckle. Uh, it, it's just this absolute, this, this entire thing. Uh, I guess it's somehow, I think the audience that they're aiming for is like beginning preppers or, or, or something. Uh, like not the hard, but the people going down the prepper guideline. Uh, so here are some of the articles that they've run recently under their essential reading. Here is 25 survival recipes you should practice making now, and I would certainly put blackberry cobbler on that. 150 skills we'll need after the collapse. Probably most of us, if we have two of them, I would be shocked. Of course, food storage for the collapse. How about home security after the collapse? The ultimate guide. That one was a real knee slapper. Uh... How to become the gray man after society collapses. Uh, yeah, yeah, here it goes. How to build a survival community before the collapse. That, that, that one was one of these on this unadulterated horseshit uh, of getting a community of like-minded doomers. Uh, you, you know, so you can all, you know, get a piece of land like bugs in a jar farm and, and, and make a, a resilient community with big organic gardens and, and, and all of this stuff. Yeah, right. Ain't going to happen. I've had that rant. Um, all right. Get ready for disaster in just seven days. I guess we're going to have a disaster in seven days. Survival cooking after the collapse of society. Yes. The ultimate guide to bugging out when all hell breaks loose. And uh, right under that is an ad for Scott Rapid Dissolving toilet paper available at Amazon. Uh, the ultimate guide to bugging out when all hell breaks loose. Don't forget the toilet paper. But we're gonna look in at today's recommendation. The complete guide to survival gardening for doomers. Uh, <laughs> Uh, 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 you know, uh, of all of the ain't gonna happens, that ain't gonna happen is these people who, who think for one fucking minute that they're gonna survive for more than a week uh, with uh, their survival garden. It, 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 it's the biggest pile of unadulterated horse shit out there. Okay, if, if you are not at, at least at bare minimum an armed to your teeth seasoned gardener 
with several acres of land uh, and a way to protect it, 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 it ain't going to happen. Okay. Uh, but uh, I want to share this email that I received a couple of weeks ago for, uh, from my good buddy. Uh, uh, let's see. I guess I can use his name. This is my good buddy, Kevin. Uh, sent me this email, which I think is a perfect segue because Kevin is a pretty decent gardener. <clears throat> and you got to understand, Kevin... He, he he doesn't live, you, you know, out in the boonies in the middle of fucking nowhere like I do. And he doesn't live in the middle of a big city. He lives, uh, he, he, he lives at the end of a cul-de-sac and uh, I don't in, in what would probably be called a leafy suburb. But I guess it's a, you know, he lives in a, a, a beautiful home uh, of, uh, I, I, would, I would call it upper middle class suburban folks, you, you, you know, like a real leave it to beaver type neighborhood. Uh, he's the last house on this beautiful cul-de-sac, has this nice home, and, uh, he has his garden and his fruit trees. Uh, I do not have fruit trees. Well, I have these apple trees. There's about 10,000 apples on that tree, but, uh, it, it, they were here before I got here. You know, I'm a 64-year-old doomer, and uh, I don't plant fruit trees. But this is what has happened to Kevin's fruit trees for the second year in a row. <coughs> for the second year in a row... <coughs> Try this again. For the second year in a row, one of my neighbors came into my backyard and picked clean all of my fruit trees, apples, peaches, plums, and others in one day. They came in and cleaned me out. You're right. You cannot trust any. One, I will have hidden cameras installed next year and turn the video video over to the county sheriff. I'm looking forward to it. If the thief had simply asked me for some, no problem. Instead, they took everything. <clears throat> and it's not even the collapse of civilization yet. Anyone who thinks... That your best friend won't kill you for your last half roll of toilet paper after the collapse happens is a moron. I am so pissed and defeated and deflated. <clears throat> well, obviously, <coughs> as I told Kevin... He had not read the complete guide to survival gardening for doomers. Yes. This post may contain affiliate links as an Amazon associate. I earn from qualifying purchases. And it's shocking that this Doomer, I, I'm not going to embarrass this Doomer running this collapse site, has all of this shit that you can buy, uh, you know, on Amazon and Lowe's and here's PetSmart and all of the uh, rest of them. Yeah, a, a, a Doomer Amazon associate.
who earns from qualifying purchases and then uh, here's about ten thousand dollars worth of shit you can get from Amazon uh, right to illustrate the complete guide to survival gardening for doomers <coughs> All right, there is a troubling video on YouTube that projects the immediate aftermath of a societal collapse related to our food supply and everything else we need to live. One of the main points that becomes apparent is that store shelves will be empty either as a result of panic buying or looting. Yes, it has been estimated that the average family has about a week's worth of food. So, after the collapse, the threat of malnutrition and starvation will be an immediate threat and could motivate even the most even-tempered individuals to loot for food. An obvious solution is to stockpile foods in a dedicated survival pantry, but stockpiles run out eventually. A good solution, yes, a good for solution for anyone is survival gardening uh-huh but as you might suspect it also requires a bit of preparation yeah like uh 30 years of uh trial and error training uh, a couple of acres of land uh thousands and thousands of dollars worth of shit that you have to buy on amazon and uh, don't, don't forget your AR-15. <clears throat> it requires a bit of preparation and the security of any outdoor garden will become a challenge. If people are looting stores for food, there's little to stop them from raiding a backyard garden. And so uh, this fellow, as I say, whose name I'm not going uh, to use, uh, just basically tells you all the ways to uh, all the ways that you can make these little gardens that would not uh, grow enough food to feed a hamster for a week with all of these uh, products you can buy on uh, you can buy on Amazon now uh, Sandy has these things I've helped Sandy put these together on her on her deck I would say that let's say if we're talking a family of four uh, a family of four would probably need about, you know, to feed themselves to survive off of these little uh, vertical gardens, these little plastic gardens from Amazon. I'm guessing uh, 10,000 of them might feed a family of, of four and and here is like uh, I, I guess this is an indoor an indoor tomato cage they're showing two tomato plants which would feed a family of four two tomato plants you might get enough tomatoes for a family of four to eat for three days. 
But, uh... All right, don't forget all of these seeds. So, I I anyway, guys, this shit goes on and on and on and on and on. Uh, th 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 this unadulterated horseshit uh, acting like that, that uh, number one, uh, you're going to be able to grow enough food in your little garden from Amazon.com, you know, to feed a hamster for a week. Uh, I remember, uh, I've told this story when I was up there visiting uh, James Howard Kunstler, <coughs> Spent a night at, at Jim's house a couple of years ago. I, I don't care. Kunstler's never speaking to me again. And we go out to his garden. And, he, and, 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 he, and he's showing me his backyard gardening. And, and there's not enough food there uh, to, to feed a fucking gerbil for a week. And, and, and I'm thinking, is does James Howard Kunstler, is, 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 is this clueless fucking moron uh, thinking on any level uh, that, that this little patch of uh, uh, basically culinary herbs for his kitchen uh, is actually uh, survival gardening? And, and then you have this one. Adding wild foraging to the equation, please pull your head out of your ass. And uh, then we finally get down to defending your garden. And of course, there's defending your garden against, uh, well, that's, that's dinner in the stew pot there. But uh, we finally get to... The human element, yes, the human element, he is suggesting, uh, obviously, the closer you can have your garden to your actual house, the better the chance it won't get raided. So if it's like uh, if you have it on a two-story deck, uh, you're less likely to get your two-story deck garden raided uh, than a garden out in your backyard. And of course, if you can actually bring your survival garden inside with all of these expensive pieces of plastic that you can buy from Amazon.com so the dude with the website can get all of these kickbacks from Amazon from these clueless fucking morons purchasing uh, this shit from it. Uh, if you could feed a family of four, uh, if, if, you, if, if you completely covered all of your decks and the inside of your house, if every square inch of your decks and the inside of your house were wall to wall uh, w w with this crap from Amazon.com, uh, you would starve to death. Your family of four would die of starvation in less than a month. Uh, here we go. Uh, and then, of course, don't forget the solar motion detector you can buy on Amazon can come in handy. Although a desperate person may simply smash it, grab what they want, and move on. And so, to some degree, desperate garden looters may be the best re reason to plant your garden on a deck, balcony, or indoors. If they're in the house, meaning if, if, if the garden looters are in your house, you have bigger problems than losing a few tomatoes. Firearms are often touted as a solution, especially for a home break-in. But do you really want to shoot a desperate mom taking a cantaloupe 
from your garden. There you go. And, uh, of course, he goes on and uh, tells you to rip out your flower gardens and replace them with vegetables. I, I just did a rant uh, earlier today about dead trees right up against houses getting ready to fall on houses. I have three dead trees getting ready to fall on this house. So anyway, you know, guys, I, I'm sorry. I'm just, uh, I, I'm just enjoying my flower gardens while I still can. Uh, okay, the the amount of food I could grow in this uh, raised bed. This is twelve. This is twenty four feet of raised bed. Uh, 24 feet long, two feet wide, one foot deep. Uh, the amount of food I could grow in this raised bed garden, uh, might be able to feed me for... I mean, if, 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 if I bought nothing from the store, uh, I might eat by for one week with the food I could grow out of, out of this garden. So uh, I just prefer to uh, have this, all of this beautiful stuff to look at uh, while I'm waiting for my neighbors to come kill me, uh, to come kill me for my last half roll of toilet paper. But, uh, and my, uh, cobblers are coming along fine. Oh man, I gotta get out here and look at these blackberries. So maybe this is part of wild foraging. Oh man, that is as good as it gets. I need to come out here and make another uh, cobbler for the end times. I'm probably going to get 50 gallons of berries off of my berry bushes so we're these these berries are getting so out of hand I I'm having to build a fence along the back because uh, <laughs> these berries are taking over oh, man look at these so let's uh, anyone who Let's just check in my garden. <coughs> I basically have seven tomato plants. This is uh, a bunch of free uh, cucumbers and cantaloupes and watermelons this Amish woman gave me. If there's any cuke here, come some cukes coming on. These damn cukes, you can't see them till you're... All right, so this is seven tomato plants. Uh, off of these seven tomato plants, I am probably going to get 100 pounds of tomatoes off of these... Uh, these seven plants. This is my BLT garden. Uh, having to start some new lettuce. It's basically uh, tomatoes and basil. But this plant, I think this might be the biggest uh, tomato plant on planet Earth. This is my cherry tomato plant, which is now, this is one plant is close to 10 feet tall 
So this plant is 10 feet tall, 8 feet wide, uh, is probably, I'm going to guess, have somewhere between 500 and 1,000 cherry tomatoes on it. It's uh, hard to uh, live for long. Oh, the cherry tomatoes. <laughs> Good Lord, look at this crazy thing, guys. A tomato plant. Oh, man. All right. I see some red forming. Oh, yes. So, uh, gardening is what you do for like your BLTs and blackberry cobblers. That early girl should be, I should have an early girl ready to pick in here. But uh, man, this is called a primo. Tomato. I've never planted this primo variety. Uh, so that is the primo. Of course, we have the good old celebrity. I'm going to have about 500 tomatoes coming in in one week. Next month. Good Lord. And of course, those beef steaks. What it's all about. Oh, man. So get out there and enjoy your garden while you still can. But uh, come on, guys. Uh, anybody thinks I. Uh, <laughs> you're not kidding me. You are not kidding me. That's why I'm sticking to flowers mostly. But I do love my cherry tomato plant. All right. I have blackberries to go pick to make a, another blackberry cobbler for the end times. While I still can, good lord, I'm going to come out here and pick two gallons of blackberries. Another day in the country. The Rose of Sharon is busting out all over. Get out there and enjoy your flowers while you still can. Ah, look at those dead trees. Just as soon look at my flowers. Bye guys.